Hey ninjas, and welcome to the GraphQL Dojo. All right then, so quite a few people have been asking me to do a GraphQL series, and my friends, I am finally answering the call. So in this series, we're gonna be going from absolute novice to complete black belt in GraphQL, both on the server side using Node.js, and also we'll be getting a front end perspective on the client side using React too. So ideally, before you start to train yourselves in the art of GraphQL, I'd recommend that you have at least a basic grasp of Node.js and possibly even a familiarity with React too. Now, that is not essential, my friends, because I will walk step by step through everything we do in this playlist, both on the server side and on the client side too. But if you do find yourself scratching your head, then I would recommend you check out either my Node or React series. The links to both of those are going to be down below. So, what exactly is GraphQL anyway? Well, basically, it's a very powerful query language used to communicate data between a client, the browser, and a server. And it allows us to structure data-driven applications in a much more flexible and efficient way than a RESTful approach would. So imagine that we created some kind of RESTful API for a website which displays books and authors. Now, to retrieve information about a particular book and display that information on a web page, we would probably make an AJAX request to an endpoint which looks something like this, forward slash books, then forward slash the ID of whatever the book we want to retrieve is. Now, this would bring back some information, presumably, about that book, such as the title, the genre, reviews, and the author ID. So we could display that information on the page, but then if we wanted to display author information about this book as well, then typically what we'd do is grab this author ID and then make another request to a different endpoint, such as forward slash authors, forward slash ID, to get information about that author, such as the name, the age, biography, and a list of book IDs. And they correspond to the different books that this author has written. OK, so already we've made two requests from this page to show book information and author information. So this is already getting a little bit inefficient. Then imagine we also want to display information about each other book that this author has written. Now, we've already got a list of book IDs right here. So what we could do, I guess, is make subsequent requests to this endpoint right here for each different book. Now, at this point, we could be making three, four, five or more requests to this endpoint just to get information about each different book. So this is when the chinks in the arm of RESTful design starts to show. Now, I want you to contrast this to a GraphQL query for the same information, which looks something like this. So here we have a GraphQL query. This is what they look like. And what we're doing is asking for a book with a particular ID, one, two, three. Then we want the title, genre, reviews of that book, as well as the author. And from the author, we want the name, the bio, and a list of books. And from each book, we just want the name of that book. So all of this right here is just one request in GraphQL. And we're getting back all of that information and all of that related nested information from this one single HTTP request rather than sending four, five, six, or seven requests to get that information using RESTful Design. Now this, my friends, is freaking awesome, and it is one of the many reasons that I love GraphQL so much. That's not all, what's more? If you don't want all of this information and you just want some of that information from each different thing, then you can be selective as to what you want returned to you. For example, we could say we just want the title of the book, the name of the author and the name of the books that that author has written. And we don't need to bloat the return of this request with all this different information, such as the genre, the reviews, the bio that we don't really want. So this is another great thing about GraphQL, and we'll see all of this in action as we go along through this series. All right then, guys. So in this series, what we'll be doing is creating from scratch a GraphQL server using Node.js. And we'll be querying that GraphQL server from the front end. So to do that, we'll be creating a React app to run in the browser, which is then going to query that GraphQL server and retrieve information from it. So if we click on a book over here, we're going to see information about the book, the author, and the different 
books by that author as well. So this is using GraphQL behind the scenes to query that information from the GraphQL server and retrieve it back here. We can also add data by filling out this form down below. So the book name, the genre and the author. If we click add, it's going to pop here on the screen. We could click on this and we can see information about that book and all the different books by that author as well. So this is pretty cool. We're adding information and we're also retrieving information from the GraphQL server. So in essence here, what we're doing is creating a mini full stack application centered around this whole idea of GraphQL with React on the front end and Node on the back end. Now, before we get started creating that, I just want to make sure that you have Node.js installed on your computer. Either of these versions will do right here and you can find it at Node.js.org. The link is going to be down below. Secondly, I'm using a text editor called Atom. A lot of people always ask me which one I'm using. It is this because it's freaking awesome and free. So download that if you wish. I implore you to do so. Um, I'm also going to be using a tool called CMD or Commander. I still don't know how to pronounce this, but it is just a console emulator for Windows. You don't have to use this. You can use Command Line or whatever console you wish. This is the one I'm using and you can find it at Commander or CMD net the link is also going to be down below now finally i am as always going to be giving you access to all of the course files in this playlist you can find them at this repo right here graphql playlist on github i'll leave the link down below and if you want to get the code for lesson 10 for example you need to select it from this branch drop down go to lesson 10 and you're going to see lesson 10 code appear right here so there we go, my friends. That is your whirlwind introduction to GraphQL. I really, really hope you enjoy this series. I've really enjoyed creating it. And if you do like the videos, please, my friends, do not forget to share, subscribe and like. And I'm going to see you in the very next one.